absolute wonky wreck of a fight coming up this weekend at heavyweight if you have some galaxy brained idea of how either one of these guys is going to win you let me know because this is going to be a sloppy striking mess between the hurricane harry hunsucker his second time out with the promotion he is 0 and 1 against australians in the ufc he is taking on an australian in the one and three ufc fighter it's justin taffa you pepper in three wins he's four and three overall in his young mma career he is billed as a striker he has had some good fights in the ufc if you look at it his fight against carlos felipe those boys just put head to head and they went full box mode and it was a lot of fun it was rock'em sock'em robots you love to see that his UFC debut uh, at Marvel Stadium, that was the Adesanya Whitaker card in front of friends and family. He gets oh. knocked out by Jorgen DeCastro on the back foot. He, no, no, no. He didn't only get knocked out by Jorgen DeCastro on the back foot. Jorgen had his eyes closed when he landed that shot. It's even worse. And I mean, listen, if you want to play catch-up, Jarjus Danho, the man mountain, beat Jorgen DeCastro. So there's crazier things that have happened. He then knocks yeah. out Juan Adams. That's also on a pay-per-view main card then he loses the split decision to carlos felipe and then his last time out he loses the decision to jared vandera in just an overall like it was kind of surprising the performance this is what i have to say about justin taffa i think we were onto the justin taffa train really early to be honest because i vividly i have a very weird memory craig you probably know this and i can remember some things very clearly especially if there's a uh, strong emotion tied to it with justin taffa I remember his uh, early video so well because I was kind of surprised the UFC signed him, if I'm being completely honest. At least in his earlier MMA fights before he did come to the big promotion, he didn't really show me enough skills to really prove that, hey, you belong to be on the big stage because let's call a spade a spade. Justin Taffa was getting taken down by guys who didn't even really belong in the division before he came to the UFC. But when it got back up to the feet, he'd light them up. Exactly, and that's the thing about Taffa. When you are in that kickboxing range, he is as deadly as any fighter in this division. But this is the thing I always feel like when we talk about Justin Taffa. You can beat him unless you fight his fight. Now, I understand that's easier said than done, especially in the heavyweight division, because let's be honest, 70% of the fighters in the heavyweight division kind of employ a Justin Taffa-esque style. You know what I mean? We defend takedowns, we strike for power, because everybody at heavyweight has that natural knockout ability, so it sort of just naturally gives you a better chance of winning your fights. That's how I feel with Taffa. I always feel like unless you are fighting his exact fight, you're going to have a very good chance to beat him. And it'll be very interesting against Harry Hunsucker because that kind of is the point. We talked about this with Dante Mays earlier on in the card. He might not be as skilled as his opponent, but they're probably going to fight at what his strength is. That's kind of how I see this fight against Harry Hunsucker. Is Hunsucker the more skilled guy in the clinch? I think he is. Is he more able to get the takedown? I think he is. And for these reasons only. Taffa, I think, has a very specific punching power range. We kind of saw that in the Carlos Felipe fight. When they were very close, Taffa didn't have this big, big power because he wasn't able to put everything behind his shots. He really does need sort of an extension and a setup into a lot of his shots. And that's why I'm so surprised about the odds and where they're at leading into this fight. So let's talk about those and then we'll go backwards just a little bit. So Taffa opened a minus 325 favorite. He's a minus 340 or thereabouts for Hunt Soccer. Open a plus 275. He's plus 259 or thereabouts. So for Hunsucker coming into the UFC, it's not often that we get UFC heavyweights that have fought on the regional scene in Kentucky fighting the Tony Negative Parkers opponents. of the world, you know, just throwing up one-handed layups or passing it out to the perimeter 2007 to 2007 finals MVP, show some respect. Yeah, no, but he beat him by Americana. Uh, Tony Parker was 15-7 and seven at the time. That was two years ago for Hunsucker. Hunsucker, he fights Jordan Mitchell after that, who's 9-14. and 14. He loses to Jared Vandera over on Contender Series, gets finished, and then he beats Corey Moon, gets knocked out, or gets the knockout there. Then he gets the fight against Taito Ivasa three weeks later and gets knocked out in 49 seconds. My critique to Harry Hunsucker. I thought he was almost going to finish Jared Van Der in that fight, and then he just kind of punched himself out a little bit. But when I look at it for Hunsucker, he's the type of guy to press forward, get the takedown, get on top, rain blows, finish the fight. Two contrasting styles. Hunsucker will leave himself open to where Tafa can definitely capitalize on the shots, and that's what I think makes a, a big difference in this fight. I couldn't agree more with the breakdown, and that's so interesting about Justin Taffa, because when he is doing what he's very good at, he's phenomenal at it. But this is, again, these are my issues with just sort of this fight in general. Taffa, other than the big winging overhands, doesn't really have that plan B in his striking even. Like, think about Tai Tuivasa. Tai Tuivasa can set up his big power punches with the leg kick, he can use the elbow, he can get on the inside. 
with Taffa, he has some of those weapons, but he's not dedicated enough to to those weapons to really open them up. And that's what is very interesting with him against Hunsucker, because Hunsucker is going to be the one crashing forward a lot, which is going to give Taffa the big opportunity to land the shot. But again, with the odds, if you're giving Taffa, let's say, 10 opportunities to get the knockout in this fight, because let's say that's how many times Hunsucker's coming forward... Like, he really only needs that one shot, but if things go wrong for Taffa, and he does get taken down even that one time, I really do worry about his ability to get back up to his feet at the UFC level. I mean, Hunsucker and his durability, it's a question mark. Out of his 11 pro fights, four losses, four of them by knockout. And for Taffa, again, you kind of mentioned it, the Tuivasa fight for Hunsucker, that's really the thing. You gotta play the mind game of, okay, what's he gonna do now? And what if I rush forward? But what if he comes forward at me like he did against Sakai? What if he gets me in the clinch? So on and so forth. With Tafa, I'm going to be more at distance. I'm going to strike more at distance. What's another heavyweight comparable that you could give me for Tafa? <sighs> like, I... I don't want to say Mark Hunt, but almost to a degree. Like, this is the problem with Give Taffa. me a non-Anzac fighter. <laughs> it's somewhat different. No, uh, let me think. Can I say Roki Martinez? Because honestly, I put them kind of in the same... Like, this is the honest truth. I don't think Justin Taffa and Harry Hunsucker are going to be top 15 heavyweights. Because... Jorgen Castro isn't even in the UFC right now. They couldn't wait to get rid of him, and he has a knockout win over Taffa with his eyes closed. That really is a big point. Like, you had kind of brought it up early, so I felt the need to let the cat out of the bag, but Taffa lost at the thing he does the best at to a guy who wasn't looking at what he was doing. And I understand he was at home. I'm sure there's a lot of emotions that come with that. It was early on in the fight. I'm sure I'd be excited fighting in front of 70,000 people from my home country, too. But that really does worry me. When you are a specialist who has been beat at your specialty, that always is a big red flag for me in MMA. <sighs> Somebody's going to win by finish in this fight. So I like the under two and a half rounds, and it's probably somewhere lower than the favorite that Justin Taffa is right now. If, if under two and a half rounds is better than minus 340, maybe you want to go with that. Or you heed my warnings because these are unranked heavyweights and anything can happen. And for that reason, I like the underdog and Harry Hunsucker. I think he's going to take the fight to the mat early. And I think you're going to see Hunsucker get the win in this fight. He's fought... A, a not great level of competition to be in the UFC. It was a surprise signing based on the way that Vandera fight went. I, I don't necessarily see a big future. Like, I don't see these guys fighting Cyril Gaon. I don't see these guys fighting Marcin Tabor. I don't see these guys fighting Shamil Abderkimov tomorrow. However, I do have Hunsucker in this fight. Powers the big equalizer. Justin Taffa has it. And again, wouldn't necessarily be surprised if Australia gets a big win there. You go to 5-3. and three. But for me, I'm going to take the big underdog here. I'm going to feel dirty if I tie, like if we get a co-MVP. That's because, not how this works, no, no, no. you pick. No, 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 I just said, I'm going to feel dirty if I get a co-MVP this year because Justin Taffa is the reason I get one pick ahead of you. This is what I'll have to say. I do worry about Hunsucker's ability to take a shot well, because it's, it's, it's... It, it is very concerning. But the same thing does have to be said. My pick is Taffa, but the hesitations I have about Hunsucker's durability are just about as big as mine are for Taffa and his inability to get up off of the, his ground. Because again, if you go back and watch some of the tape about him before the UFC, he's fighting in like bars with 10 people in the crowd and it's to people who have like one MMA fight and then they never fight again. He fought a guy who went 0-1 and, and only fought him. And he got taken down in the first round and got controlled. Like, I do worry about Justin Taffa and his long-term career in the UFC, but I think he'll get this win. Matt? I'm going with the big underdog here, Harry Hunsucker. Let's go. Let's Hunsuck it. Yikes. Matt, you've got the bad man, Justin <laughs> Taffa. Let's see if it's Hunsucker time. Win one for Kentucky. Let's go. We had a big time heavyweight fight in our main event. Of course, Derek Lewis taking on Chris Dawkins. You're not going to want to miss that. And the rest of the fights on this card, so keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. We always say, let's, let's get, get into it. it.